Hi again everyone, I'm back and today I have a bit of a confession. The last couple of videos I made showing showing off really my biofuel building and biofuel production shortly after I made my last video I had a catastrophic failure. I came in the next morning and found this tank completely drained of biofuel, my whole base completely out of power, um, AE network was down, everything was offline. All of the bioreactors were completely empty. I had no, you know, no ingredients in stock to make more. Uh, it was all a pretty big mess. So today I thought I'd just show what I did to recover from that and uh, maybe how you can protect yourself from having a similar situation happen. So first of all, I'll explain what happened. I'll, uh, I'll just shoot up to the top. Now, last time I showed you how to make one of these tree farms, uh, that I was quite proud of at the time. Uh, turns out these tree farms use a lot of power. So when you look at this, that's that's really dipping down. And considering the amount of power production I have, that's that's not a good thing to be seeing. And as it's doing that once for every leaf that it cuts, one tree farm, not so bad. Two tree farms, still not so bad. By the time I showed you what was the third tree farm here, and then shortly after I made that video, I made a I made a fourth tree farm. Um, so I had all four of these running. I had two oak, two birch, thought that was that, logged out for the night, came back in the morning, everything was off. So how did I recover from this? Well, luckily for me, and this helped a lot, luckily I had these three LV solar panels uh, still out in a chest actually. So I managed to get these plug these in to some to some cable I managed to run the cable just connect it to here which is my main cable that runs back to my processing room and I connected it back into my AE network so my AE at the moment uses as you can see just over 130 EU per tick now I did manage there's this cable here that runs to the rest of my base runs to all my automated processing and stuff uh, some of which you can see here uh, there's some upstairs as well. You can see my um, assembly chamber cube there, just the bottom of it. So that uses a lot of power. I cut that and this here dropped then to 40 EU per tick. So still not quite enough just to run the solar from. Uh, so I then had to hook these two generators up uh, manually to this, which was also completely drained. And one of the problems that I found is that because I had everything running off EU, not only did I need the 24 EU per tick from the solar and then another 20 here and that was enough to run the AE but it wasn't enough to recharge the farms which are also completely out of power. Um, I'm using the P2P tunnels as well from AE to transfer the power in the first place so if your AE is not running none of the power even gets through to the farms. It, it was a complete mess. I, I really sort of screwed up the design on that. So one of the things I did to recover is I managed to get my AE limping just enough to get some resources out of it. The resources I chose to get out were enough resources to make these eight generators. So made these eight generators, managed to make enough export buses and emitters, and then I discovered this really cool block, the scaffold. Now I've discovered that it basically burns the same as a plank of wood or a, a log of wood. But when you craft these, you get 16 of them at a time. So uh, this is basically set to more than 8,000 wood. Automatically craft these and spit them out. Now at the time when I was recovering, I didn't use the scaffolding for that. I I luckily back in here have those two coke ovens over there so I had some charcoal I could burn instead so I used that to recover. And that started the farms up again which gave me some materials which I could then run into the bioreactors and start getting some biofuel again. Uh, once I had biofuel coming through again I had to turn off a whole bank of these and I, I think to start with I only ran like one or two of these again just because the farms were running so slowly to begin with and then these gradually came back online and I had power again. Now one of the things I discovered is when I had just eight of these turned on like I do now with my old setup anyway when I have just eight of these turned on they don't keep up with all 24 of my semi-fluid generators running at once. Now these were all running at once to try and keep up with the tree farms 
these were not keeping up with the materials. I had all 16 of them turned on at the time and they just ran out of materials. I, I, I lost two or three things out of the list. The efficiency went down, which means my farms had to work harder and in turn use more power. It, yeah, it just fed on itself and it is a really bad cycle to get into. So one of the things you can do to protect yourself from this, I guess, is when you're setting this up, don't set and forget for a start. Uh, also, just watch these. So this one here, you can see, still got everything in there. Just run it for a little while. Um, let me find one that's currently being used. I seem to actually have everything pretty well in stock. I know that my dandelion yellow, see, I've swapped, I've swapped two out. I'm now using IC2 crops. Uh, for a couple of the things. Uh, a bit of discussion I had on the Feed the Beast forum. Thankfully, the very first reply I got was from a guy called uh, Yusanoa. So Yusanoa, shout out to you man if you're watching. Um, you said I should try IC2 crops and you are absolutely right. I've tried IC2 crops and I'm loving them what I see so far. I previously thought they were just, I don't know, a bit too hard or they didn't really appeal to me before but I'm actually really liking them now. So yeah, when you set one of these things up, just watch your levels for a while, get a feel for what's happening. If you see your the one of these materials not quite filling up, something's probably wrong. Uh, likewise, the biofuel level, you can watch this. I mean, mine's full now, but uh, as it's filling up, you should see the number sort of fluctuate a bit. So, you know, write the number down, go away for half an hour, come back and see what the number is again. If the number's, you know, going down, you you need to tweak something or stop something from using so much power or yeah you, you need to change something with it so as I said now using industrial craft 2 crops much much better yields I I have rose red and dandelion dandelion yellow uh, the red has replaced the birch the dandelion yellow has replaced uh, wheat and seeds which I no longer grow I had a bit of a weed problem. I've still got some bugs to iron out with this. It's not quite, it's not quite there yet. But I thought I would still make this video and show you what's going on. As you can see, that that emitter goes on when I have more than a thousand rose red. It's now on, so this farm is clearly keeping up with my demand for rose red. Uh, down here. And this is where the, the dandelion yellow will go. I, I still have bugs to iron out. I had to lower this light in order to even plant these in the first place. These these aren't great stats though. So as you see over here, down there is a little a little farm plot that I have purely for getting some better stats plants. I'm still figuring that out. I'm still I'm still learning this particular aspect of industrial craft though. So uh, once I know more, I'll I'll probably make a video on that as well. Uh, what else do I need to show you that I think that's kind of it I mean you just really have to diversify your your power input it's pretty disheartening to build this nice shiny setup and then just come in in the morning and have it all completely drained so I'm not sure what I will do I, I might make another tank for biofuel as a reserve tank and just have it sitting there maybe down underneath just so that I can hook it up if I need to like if I come in in the morning and I'm out again I'll probably have some better solar in my opinion these solar panels do get a little bit expensive on materials I happened to have these so I thought you know I'll, I'll leave them there anyway uh, the generators that I showed you before down the bottom I'll keep those as well they're they're always handy plus you know I don't like wasting the extra wood and over here, this is a new project I'm starting, my first go at Industrial Craft Nuclear. So hopefully that'll be a, an interesting build that I'll be able to show you soon. So I'll be able to have several different different sources of power for all the things that I potentially want to use power for. I think that's, I think that's pretty much it uh, for this time. So until next time, uh, catch you later.